Hello everyone, Chris Clamp here again and welcome back to my studio. For those of you that are new to the channel, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Chris Clamp, I'm an oil painter, and I'm a bit of an art world insider due to my time working in a commercial art gallery. I worked in this high-end commercial art gallery for 15 years and I picked up a lot of tips and tricks during that time. I have started this YouTube channel to share this information with you to help you all expand and grow your art career. So today we have a very, very good topic. I'm sure a lot of you have looked at galleries and wanted to show your artwork in an art gallery, but it's a very complicated nut to crack and you don't know what it is and how to get started. So I'm going to break down a few basic things here in the beginning about what is an art gallery and then we're going to dive in a little bit deeper so grab a pen and paper you're going to want to take notes to this Okay, an art gallery is something that is a simple, basic topic. It is a place where you show your artwork, okay? But there is a wide spectrum to what an actual art gallery is and what they do. There are essentially two kinds of art galleries. There are nonprofits and for-profit galleries. Your nonprofit gallery is more like your art museum, a university gallery, or an art gallery that is in a community space in your town or county. A commercial gallery is what you are typically thinking of when someone has an exhibition in a gallery. It is a space that is designed to show the art and sell the art. A nonprofit space is not designed to sell art. So that is one of the first ways in which they are different. You may have an exhibition at a local university or an arts council gallery, and your works of art may be for sale, but that gallery space is not actively promoting nor trying to sell your artwork. That's fine. That exhibition space exists for a different reason. The nonprofit spaces exist as a way to promote arts and their community and engage in conversation. This is all very important. It's centered around engagement and education. A commercial gallery, while also is involved in engagement and education, its main purpose is to sell the art to help build the career for their artists. Now, let's talk briefly about the nonprofit gallery again. So nonprofit galleries don't exist to sell artwork. However, you may have an exhibition on view at one of these spaces and your artwork may be for sale. If someone comes in and they're enjoying your exhibition and they really want to take a piece home, it speaks to them. Your piece may be available for purchase from this space, but they may also just direct this potential client directly to you or the gallery that represents you. This nonprofit space may take a small commission on sales. Quite often, the commission could range between 10 and 30% at a nonprofit space. Just be sure to read your contract before you have any exhibition so you understand what the terms are of your consignment. Quite often, nonprofit galleries organize an annual juried exhibition. An annual juried exhibition is a type of exhibition that's almost like a competition. Artists can submit their works and there will be a juror or a panel of jurors that will then select art for this exhibition. Artists that are selected become a bit more celebrated because they were included in this show and there often will be prizes like best in show, first, second, third place with their own 
cash reward system. Works of art may also be for sale through this, through the institution. When I was in college, juried exhibition were hugely important. It was how I got my name out there and how I got my art in front of people. I was able to make some money doing these shows as well because people saw my work and decided that they wanted to take a piece home. So they're very worthwhile doing. If you haven't been to your local community art gallery space, I highly encourage that you go and check out their calendar of events. If there is a juried exhibition, I encourage you to participate in it. It's very worthwhile in doing and helps show the community what you are doing. Many nonprofit galleries will also host a visiting artist that may be coming to give an artist lecture or demonstration. These are hugely important because it's another way for you to go and meet another artist that is a successful artist in his or her career and see how they produce what they produce, ask questions, and just sort of listen to them talk about what their art actually is. So again, I encourage you, check out the calendar of events and get involved. Let's talk about commercial art galleries now that we've kind of gone over what a nonprofit gallery will do. A commercial art gallery is only funded and sustained through the acquisitions of artwork through their gallery. A nonprofit gallery is funded through a variety of different methods. A nonprofit gallery is funded through state and local and government grants. A nonprofit gallery is also funded through corporate sponsorships as well. And also nonprofit gallery spaces are also funded through membership tiers. If you've been to your local museums, you've probably noticed that you could become a member at a variety of different price levels. This is how a museum brings people into the membership level and also adds revenue to their business. Okay, back to commercial galleries. A commercial art gallery will also have a roster of artists that they represent. What I mean by representing an artist and their career is there will be a roster of artists, say like 20 to 30 artists, even artist estates that they're showing and promoting actively and trying to inform and educate others, their collector base, about these artists and their careers. Again, these are living artists, but they could also be artist estates, meaning that these are deceased artists and the gallery is working with the artist's family or foundation to help promote the artist's career and sell those works that are remaining in the estate. A commercial gallery is going to organize exhibitions for the artists that they represent. These will be solo exhibitions, but also group exhibitions. Often a commercial gallery will put together a themed group exhibition and they may invite other artists to participate. It's a nice way to introduce a new artist to the gallery's collector base. And maybe this artist that has been invited to participate is interesting enough to the collector base that the gallery decides to add them to their roster. A commercial gallery will also have a variety of works in inventory that is not on view. You may go in to see an exhibition by a certain artist and notice that there's a dozen paintings on view, for example, but behind closed doors, there could easily be another dozen that is just waiting to be shown to someone else. This is important because as works are sold, the gallery can also bring out works that are available and maybe replace those on the wall. If a potential collector comes in and they're looking at something on view, they may really want to see more by an artist. And it's a great thing to them go to the storeroom and pull a few things out and present this to this potential collector and possibly make a sale. The commercial gallery is going to work hard to sell your artwork and also promote your career. It is outstanding what they can do. Your price point may start at a certain level and they're going to slowly increase it based on exhibition and exhibition as you go. 
Now that's the basic difference between nonprofit galleries and for-profit galleries, but let's dive a little deeper. So earlier I mentioned the idea of commissions. What I mean by commission is the amount of money that the gallery will keep upon the sale of a work of art. Nonprofit galleries will not keep as much as a for-profit gallery because the nonprofit gallery exists for a different purpose. They are not existing to sell artwork necessarily, unlike a commercial gallery, which solely is sustained by the selling of art. A nonprofit gallery is going to keep somewhere between 10 to 30% on a sale. A for-profit gallery standard is going to keep 50%. Now I know you're thinking 50% is a lot of money. Why is a commercial gallery keeping half of my money? But let me tell you, a good commercial gallery does a lot of work for you and they earn that 50%. You may be in your studio making the painting and working every day, but the commercial gallery is working hard for you every day, speaking to collectors on your behalf, running ads for you, and even taking your artwork to international art fairs to introduce it to a new audience in hopes of selling your artwork. A good commercial art gallery is going to do more to promote your artwork instead of just leaving it in their storeroom. If you're showing at a gallery that isn't working hard for you, my suggestion is to re-examine your relationship. Perhaps there's a better fit for you, someone that will work harder for you to help you promote your career. Like I said, a commercial gallery may run ads in national art magazines or ads in some very high-end local and regional magazines that showcase your work and may also encourage editorial press that helps educate your story and your artwork within your community. Advertisement spaces are very expensive in whatever publication you look at. So this is another thing a gallery will use the money that they keep to help promote you. If you're showing at a gallery that promotes an art fairs, that is also a very expensive endeavor that a gallery takes on. Art fairs are an excellent way for a gallery to get your work in front of thousands of potential buyers in just a few days. Many of you have probably heard of Art Basel, and this is an example of an international art fair. There are many art fairs that are happening around the globe and certainly around the U.S. throughout the year. If you're near one, I encourage you to check them out and you'll see what I mean. They're all very high end and they have some top galleries that participate. So whenever you are a gallery owner or you show at a gallery that participates in one, it really really takes your career up a notch. Like I said, they're expensive. So if a gallery is participating in those and they're taking your artwork to an art fair, that is another thing that they're doing for you that is funded through that commission that they keep on sales. All of that aside, another thing to keep in mind is operating a commercial gallery is very expensive. Not only do they need to pay themselves and pay their staff, but it's expensive to have the lights on just in general. I mean, think about how much the lease may cost in a good location in a good city. There's also other operating expenses. There's databases that the gallery may have to run to keep track of the inventory. There's also framing costs that the gallery will have to do to cover framing on works of art that you may be providing them. There's also shipping costs to ship artwork that is sold to clients. There is also freight costs to get artwork to and from art galleries. It's a very expensive endeavor running an art gallery and there is a huge overhead. And that is why a good art gallery is going to hustle for you and sell your work to help sustain their business model so they can continue to do what they do and promote you and sell your art and help your career grow. Okay, here's another term that I just mentioned earlier ago about nonprofit galleries and for-profit galleries and that is a consignment agreement when you consign your artwork to either of these gallery spaces there should always be some sort of paperwork or contract that's developed if the gallery doesn't supply this then you should draft one up yourself 
the consignment agreement is going to have your artwork on it, the title, date, medium, size, and it will have it all listed there. And both parties will sign and date this contract. And it is a record of what is at this gallery or at this gallery. And that way both parties know what's there and there is an understanding on the terms. Most commercial galleries may want to have a consignment of artwork that is a minimum of six months. This is going to change gallery to gallery, I assure you. But the reason why they would like to have a minimum period of time to have your artwork is so you aren't treating your artwork at their gallery like a storeroom the gallery is going to be actively working to promote your artwork. A commercial gallery may have someone on the hook to buy one of your paintings, so you definitely don't wanna show up and ask for your work back before the time is right. Let them do their job. Now, the consignment is also going to have other terms on there, like the amount of money that both parties will keep. It will have the retail price, but also the amount of the commission whether it's 10%, 20%, or 50% in case of a commercial art gallery. That way both parties know the amount of money that will be held in the event of a sale. A consignment agreement may cover other things, like who's responsible for framing, or who's responsible in terms of return shipping at the end of a consignment, or whatever the case is. So just be sure to look at your consignment agreement and read it very closely. And if you have questions, just speak with your gallery space. You want to be professional at all times. A lot of things that I've learned through my time of working in a commercial art gallery is the artists that are kept the longest and the artists that are sold the most often are the artists that are the easiest to deal with. In your life, I'm sure you do not like dealing with difficult people and neither does a business owner. In a commercial art gallery space, it is very much a family affair. Many of these galleries have represented artists for a very long time and they stay together because not only are they selling the art, but they are a pleasure to work with and become like family. So learn from them and stay humble and stay soft. If you're a pleasure to work with, then others will want to work with you. How do you approach a gallery and present your artwork? That's a good question. Simple answer is you don't. Well, let me back up. There is a right way to do it and a wrong way. I'll tell you a few things not to do. Don't walk into a gallery and say, I have my artwork out in my car. Come out and let me show it to you. Don't come into a gallery and say, I have my artwork right here. You need to look at it. Don't walk into a gallery and ask to speak to the gallery owner and take up their time talking about yourself. All of these things I just described, don't do that in an art fair either. Don't walk into someone's booth at an art fair and start talking about yourself and showing them your artwork. They are there to sell the artist that they brought, not to necessarily meet a new artist. If you want a good way to have a gallery not take you seriously, is to do all of those things. But you're not gonna do that. You're gonna be professional. You're gonna do it the right way. You're gonna do it the way I'm telling you right now. And that is to gently approach a gallery. You can do it through an email. Some galleries will have a contact page that says that they are looking for submissions or they're accepting submissions and this is how you do it. So go to a gallery's website and go to their contact page and see what they are asking for. Some galleries say they are not accepting commissions, but they might look at things that are sent. In that case, just send them an email. What you'll want to include are a few images of your recent work. Make sure they're in JPEG format and small files, something that's less than two megabytes each. Also include your CV or resume, any exhibition history, any publication material, and also include your current price structure. This will help the gallery understand where your artwork is and how it fits into their price range at their gallery. Another thing to keep in mind when approaching a gallery is look at a gallery and look at what they show. Does your artwork fit into their roster? 
Are you someone that paints in such a bizarre way that it doesn't fit into their program? You want to make sure that your artwork fits into their program well. I don't mean that you are a copy of someone they show, but there is a similar feel to the artwork. You may not want to approach a gallery that shows an artist that is someone that paints very much like you. For example, let's say you are a beautiful realist landscape painter and you paint amazing coastal scenes in a realistic manner. If you look at a gallery's roster and there is someone that they show there that you love that paints a lot like you, the gallery might not want to take you on because your work will be competition for the other artist. That gallery has a dedication to that artist that they've been showing for years, that they've built a relationship with and a collector base. While your art might be outstanding, it's going to be a confusing thing to put side by side with this other artist and could hurt the sales of the original artist. So the gallery will probably pass on your artwork. That doesn't mean your artwork is not as good or not good for them. It's just business and you have to keep these things in mind. There's one more thing I'm going to leave you with. This is one crucial thing and one thing I will always thank the gallery that I worked in for teaching me. I went through four years of art school. I participated in numerous exhibitions and juried exhibitions, and I never knew how you listed your dimensions on a work of art. Is it height by width? Is it width by height? It was the most confusing thing, and I didn't know what to do. Well, when I started working with the art gallery within the first week, the gallery director said, in the art world, it's height by width. So when you fill out that checklist and you're going to send it to an art gallery that you are approaching for representation, be sure to list your artwork height by width, and this will make you look informed and more professional. Well, that about wraps up this video. This is a topic that I have a large amount of information and I want to share it with you all. If you have any questions, please include those in the comments below and I assure you that I will answer all of your questions. Also, stay tuned to upcoming videos. I will be dropping more information like this moving forward in other videos and these are things you will not want to miss, so be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, if you all found this video helpful, please click the like button. I'm going to produce more videos like this in the future, so please stay tuned. Everyone, let's get back to work. Happy painting. Thank you.